Hi guys, uh, uh, this is actually a piston that I've modeled on SolidWorks and uh, it is actually not a piston that uh, you know is used in any of the engines or any particular vehicle as such. It's just a, 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 something that I've made out of my imagination and uh, some random dimensions. Fine. So it may not re resemble any particular piston as such. Okay. So right now, today in this video, we are going to discuss how we are going to model a piston on SolidWorks. So normally people are very uh, hesitant as far as modeling uh, engine parts is concerned on SolidWorks, but it's actually just another thing. You just need to break the whole thing down uh, to the basic tools that you have over here on SolidWorks, and you have to figure out ways and how you can uh, work uh, work out complicated shapes. So, uh, first of all, I have to select a new part, as you may know, and uh, over here I have, uh, I have uh, opened a new part, and as I'm going to make a piston, which is actually cylindrical in shape, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll sketch a circle, and then I'll, then I'll extrude it to form a cylinder. I'll select the top plane, and I'll use circle, and I'll sketch the circle out here. I'll use smart dimensions and I'll make it of 70 mm. Okay, so I have a 70 mm dia circle over here, and then I'll go to features and I'll extrude it to make it a cylinder of say height 60 mm. Okay. I have a cylinder over here like this. Fine. Now, as I'm going to make a piston, I want it to be like a piston first before I can further work upon it so I don't want a solid thing to be there I instead want it to be hollow so the best thing uh, the best way I can make it hollow is by using shell so I'll select this surface over here and click on shell and I'll uh, here I'll have to enter the wall thickness that I'll be using and I'll use 5 mm wall thickness and uh, as I can see in the preview that yes I'll be getting a nice and beautiful shell uh, uh, shell profile uh, by this uh, thing yeah so finally I've ended up in two <coughs> I've ended up with a hollow cylinder okay now uh, if I'll be having all these walls around then it's actually not something which will work because if you see a normal piston then they have cut out regions to provide space for the connecting rod to move and to oscillate when the engine is actually uh, well oscillate is not a right word to use over there but you know uh, the piston uh, the the corner the connecting rod actually moves uh, you know in its transverse plane <laughs> while the engine is operating so uh, you know a cut cut out section has to be provided so that it is the, it does not strike the wall of the piston fine so uh, how to make that cutout region is what we are going to do next so let's select a front plane and we'll go into the orthogonal view of that plane <coughs> and now i'll uh, sketch first of all a center line over here in the middle it will be a vertical center line up till here sorry i messed it up no problem i'll do it again mm -hmm. yeah center line so I'll be making a cent vertical center line like this, and uh, I'll use a line command to make a line to here, and then to make the rest of the portion of the section, I'll use spline, which actually will help you a lot, and I'll let you know how. So actually, I've made a spline with just one point in the middle. Now I'll click on the spline to make the handles appear which is the small gray little things that you can see over here fine so these handles can be used to actually adjust the splines and work out the desired shape that you actually are looking for okay so there you go fine i'm happy with this so i'll select this spline and now i'll have to use mirror to mirror these two entities 
about this center line that I have made. Right? So I have a nice and easy cut section over here, but it's actually an open loop right now. An open, not, a, not an open loop, but an open sketch right now, which I'll have to close like this because I'm going to use extrude cut. And extrude cut can only work upon closed sections. Fine. So this is the closed section that I'm having and it is selected. So I'll use extrude cut now. Where is it? It's here. And I'll cut it through and through my piston. Okay. So as you can see, I have cut out a section through my piston. And uh, it now pretty much looks like a piston of an engine. Fine. Now, as you can see, this the top roof of my piston uh, is quite thin. So what I'll do is I'll actually make it a bit thick by selecting this surface over here and uh, making a sketch onto that surface. And uh, this sketch actually has to be of the profile of this circle over here okay so what i'll do is i'll use convert entities to generate the sec uh, the circle of that uh dia i'll get out of the sketch and then i'll click on features extrude and i'm having what i actually want so i'll extrude it up to here and i think i have thickened the roof of the piston which is actually how it has to be now you can see over here that everything is fine but now you have to make holes on which will pass through this and this side of the piston and it will actually carry the gudgeon pin which will locate your uh, con rod in place inside this connecting rod sorry about that so what you have to do is you have to actually you know make this thing planner so that you can have a hole and uh, you can have a, a planner section uh, which you can use to actually align your uh, connecting rod with how you have to do that is first i'll select this plane i'll go into the orthogonal view of this plane i'll click on sketch and then i'll take a circle i'll make a circle up till here then i'll select line I'll make a line in line with uh, with th these two lines that I'm having fine right? I'll make a similar line aligned to these two lines over here so I'll select line and I'll make lines like this I hope it is okay yeah, it is <laughs> fine now I use trim entities to trim these two things out here so now you can see that I'm having two pieces of sketches on either side of my piston. Fine, I'll get out of the sketch and I'll use extrude to actually extrude this inside. And even if it penetrates through the surface, not this much, a little bit, it doesn't matter because uh, you know it hardly matters over here. Okay. So now you can see that we are having two planar surfaces which can help us to position our hole and uh, which uh, can help us to actually align our connecting rod and position it inside the piston. Fine. Now what we have to make is we have to make a hole through which the gudgeon pin has to pass. So I'll select this plane and I'll go on sketch. Fine. And I'll go into the orthogonal view of this plane. I'll select a circle and I'll make sure that I'm making the circle symmet uh, you know approximately in the center and probably this is the center and as I've told you before that I'm not behind any uh, specific dimensions for any particular engine or any particular vehicles engine so you know I can take advantage of that over here right now and select whatever dimensions that I feel like and here's a circle that I have made and now I'll use extrude cut and uh, to cut out a section and as you can see that it's cutting through this side so I'll use a direction 2 to cut through this side as well and I have actually got a hole which uh, which can hold my gudgeon pin now what I have to do is 
the connecting rod has to be located in you know within this piston and uh, to locate it you need locators and these locators have to be cylindrical in shape and uh, instead of talking blah 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 about it uh, it's better that I make it for you and then you'll be able to realize what I was talking about so here's the plane on which I'll be sketching the profile of the locator I'll go on sketch click on sketch okay the first thing that I'll first circle that I have to make is actually the same of the same shape as this hole so I'll do nothing I'll just select this uh, this edge of the circle of the hole and click on convert entity so I have obtained a circle over here like this then I'll make another circle which will actually define the thickness of my extrusion here they are, there I go fine so now I'll get out of this sketch and I have a set of concentric circles and they are selected I click on features I click on extrude and there I have an extrusion so I'll go into an orthogonal plane and actually adjust it over there if you have any particular dimension you can actually set that dimensions over here but I don't have so I'll just randomly do it and show you so my extrusion is over over here fine so uh, this is the feature that I was looking for and I have got it and a similar feature has to be on has to be there on the other side on the other wall as well so I'll uh, mirror this thing about the right plane I guess yes it is and there you go you have two uh, cylindrical uh, extrusions which will actually help you locating the connecting rod fine now you can see this edge which actually is something I'm not able to digest and I'll make it into fillet and 10 mm will be too big a fillet for that so I'll use 5 mm and similarly on this side as well okay so there you go I have a piston with uh, the locators and with the hole for the gudgeon pin all right now the next thing that is very important is the rings and how you make those rings uh, is by using revolved cut so I'll actually make a profile which will define the profile of the section that I have to cut out uh, over here onto the piston and then I'll use revolved cut to cut around that section or that profile around my piston so I'll go to front plane and I'll click on sketch and I'll go on to the orthogonal view of that plane I'll click on rectangle because that's how I want my section or my ring to be I'll click a thin ring over here like this and that's it and then I'll want two rings to be there so I'll make another sketch on the front plane itself and rectangle uh, select rectangle and uh, I'll make another ring shape fine the dimensions hardly matters because I'm not looking for them and there you go right so they may seem to be a big a bit big but that hardly matters you can make it as, as small as possible or if you have any particular dimensions you can go with that then you can use sketch again to actually make a center line onto the front plane itself which can help you to actually actually revolve uh, and cut this section around your piston fine so i'm making this vertical line over here which acts as a center line or an axis and uh, get out of the sketch and we are ready with all the prerequisites that we need to actually use the tool revolved cut so first I'll select this this section that I'm having but I'll select it from this pull down menu over here because it's much simpler this way so uh, over here actually I have to put the axis about which I have to revolve so this is the axis and there you go you have the cut section with you fine now similarly I'll use revolve cut for the other ring as well and this is a sketch and this is the axis and there you go so over here you have a piston with rings and let me hide this axis over here okay so you are having a piston with rings 
Now the next thing that uh, you have to work upon is actually making shapes and making profiles onto the top of your piston. So you know you have to cut out some sections sometimes to make uh, you know uh, always a piston is not flat or uh, you know there may be some um, dome or there may be some cut sections. So if you are looking for a dome then you don't have to do uh, much you just have to select the surface and click on dome like this and you can have a thing like this so which will actually make your piston look something like this which is actually good but uh, you know i'm not looking for that i would actually like to uh, you know make you understand how you can cut some sections onto the top fine though there are uh, many sophisticated shapes that are being made onto the pistons nowadays but i'll look for a basic shape and that'll be something like an ellipse so i'll select a front plane I'll go into the orthogonal view. I'll click on sketch. I'll select an ellipse, fine. And I'll draw an ellipse over here. And this is my ellipse. Fine. Just I'm drawing some random shapes to actually just you know uh, give you an idea of how I have uh, gone through this. And uh, you know if you want you can have better shapes and if you can get a better outlook of this then you can actually figure out how you can generate some of the most sophisticated shapes onto it right so i actually have deleted half of the ellipse as you've noticed and half of the ellipse is there with me right now so most of you must have guessed what i'm going to do with this and if you have not then just watch this thing is actually selected now i'll use revolt cut and i'll select this line to cut this thing out so I have cut out an ellipse from the top. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And those who have, uh, those who are used to uh, doing all this in SolidWorks, have not found anything new on this. But people who are new, uh, you can really use the, this technique uh, uh, in, in a lot of other places, and uh, you'll find it very beneficial uh, in making some of the sophisticated designs and some sophisticated uh, structures on SOLIDWORKS so you can learn this technique over here fine so there you go you have a piston over here over on top of which you can make either a dome or you can make some cut sections uh, whichever you want and uh, it's pretty much the same as I have shown you before and on top of this uh, as you can see I have made two ellipses which uh, is actually something that is not quite realistic but you know I just made it to show you how you can actually uh, go about it fine so uh, that's it uh, that's all I have in this video and uh, you know if uh, you liked it then please click like and please subscribe to my channel and uh, uh, maybe I'll uh, come up with some better videos on a few more things of how to use SOLIDWORKS in designing some of the most interesting and uh, attractive things, uh, attractive engineering components. So thank you for watching this video and have a nice evening.